Hello, my name is Eric. I am a student in the Physical Therapy Assistant Program. Um, this is a program here at MESA that um, runs for two years. It's um, right now my second clinical rotation that I'm doing. It's at Sharp Memorial Hospital, pretty close to uh, the MESA College there. Um, and they have different settings. Uh, I'm in the uh, IQ Rehab. Um, IQ Rehab Unit, ARU, and this is a inpatient setting, so the majority of the patients are um, in there, and they're, um, I'm going to say almost 80% of them has a stroke or a traumatic brain injury. Those two will be like the main ones. And any other ones that I've seen um, occasionally will be like spinal cord injuries, um, cardiac or pulmonary disease, or sometimes transplants that um, they go in. And amputees and some of the orthopedic patients too, like with the total hip or shoulder, um, but not much, mainly stroke and traumatic brain injuries. And so they advertise three hours of physical therapy in there, or not physical, like therapy overall. So they split it in one hour of PT, uh, an hour of OT, and then another hour of speech therapy. And for some patients, speech therapy is not something that they need so they will drop them from speech therapy and so we'll do an hour and a half of physical therapy and an hour and a half of occupational therapy and so um, it's really as a physical therapy uh, assistant uh, we're just providing the services of rehabilitation to them and the goal for the patients is to be able to go back home, uh, be able to walk again, um, able to get back their balance. Um, and so a lot of them is just, um, you know, try to get them safe, um, uh, safely back home. And so when I started there, I didn't know what really, to, uh, what to expect. I just knew it was gonna be working with uh, a lot of the neuro patients and so I think a piece of advice will be just to review uh, different type of strokes, um, how, uh, what part of the brain um, affects um, when the stroke happens so that you can get an idea of um, why they're acting like that. Some of them could be impulsive, other ones could be um, some cognitive issues with them. And so, um, throughout that, uh, through interventions that you have to uh, think of, it's just mainly functional task. Sometimes um, you do some of therapeutic exercises, but mainly it's just neuromuscular re-education, um, gait training, climbing stairs, trying to show them how to uh, you know, uh, get their balance back when they do sit to stands, when they get out of the bed and they want to go to the bathroom. Um, so sometimes you have to show them how to use the assistive device um, if they don't feel or they never used one before. And so I feel like this is a really rewarding um, type of job that you see the patients going through a lot and you see how much effort they put in. You see that after a few weeks, how much improvement they've done, how interesting it is um, the way that the brain rewires back to the muscles and if they keep saying like, oh, my leg feels heavy. Um, they're, you know, sometimes they're like hemi paralyzed. So they have an arm and the leg on the right side not moving and so it's really interesting to see that in the next few weeks of uh, receiving those therapeutic uh, services they will start moving again and 
it just takes time for the most part it takes them uh, to cue them what to do right and what to what they're doing wrong showing them that they need to learn this new way uh, which is normally not the way that somebody would do things like getting in and out of the car um, we, do, we just do those things automatically but after you get a stroke it really changes your whole lifestyle um, we had a few patients that um, the stroke didn't affect it much uh, for them and so they were like we will call them like a higher level patients and so for them sometimes we have to like really challenge them with their balance and their coordination because that would be like their biggest problems or having them do um, dual tasking um, to see how we do sometimes with distracted environments or um, talking as they're walking can really throw their balance up and so um, just reinforcing that uh, because of the COVID-19 restrictions that they had uh, some of the patient's family weren't able to be there during the uh, therapy I think it's something that they used to be done before so they can get an idea of how much support they're gonna need by the time they go home uh, now they only get to visit them for an hour a day uh, during visiting hours and we do caregiver training for them uh, before they have to go home which is sometimes two or three weeks it also is the average stay for the patients there are a few of them that stay a little longer and it could be because of a worker compensation um, that they're paying for the uh, for everything so they tend to be longer and most of the time for what I've seen it's spinal cord patients that they last a little longer there months um, the longest I had it's five months a patient has been there so yeah um, but hopefully the COVID restrictions are gonna go away pretty soon and we can do caregiver training more often with the patients like they ha have the family being in the room at the same time as we're doing some of the therapy so they can see um, how they're doing having them participate in there too so that we can cue them and we can train how much or where the hand placement needs to be um, and I think I just really enjoy uh, my experience there in this clinical rotation that I feel like it could be a place I like to work. I still have one more rotation to do, so that my uh, that could change depending on how my last rotation goes. But I think this is a good career pathway I'd like to take um, for the future. So yes.